Hello, welcome back, wonderful learners. Beautiful. So we are definitely live. I always have to double check, of course. And welcome. I am Miss Chanel, language success coach. And today, you know, I normally say I give you secrets. <laughs> I haven't said secrets for the summary live or um, even when I did informatives but I am honestly going to share with you my secrets today. These are secrets that I actually give my learners. This is what I tell them. This is advice I give them for the English A exam, in particular for short story, right? And here's, uh, I love short stories right i do absolutely love it i love to write i am actually working on two series myself i've written uh, a lot of short stories in this format that cxc calls short stories um i'll let you know that these are not really short stories they're not short stories if you google the actual word count for a short story it is not 400 to 450 words okay so I like to call these mini short stories, right? And in order to understand how stories work, um, and actually that's that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with how stories work, all right? Hello, Christiana. We're gonna start with how stories work and then we're gonna go into the element and then I'm going to give you my actual secrets that I give learners because this is not an actual short story for the exam. It's very compact it's very brief and you are doing this under exam conditions you are going to be creative under exam conditions but quite frankly is very unfair in my opinion it's very unfair but we have to do it okay so let's understand what stories are so i'm going to show you some stories that i have here oh my god this one looks really crazy and i never read that out so this is a wrinkle in time I can never pronounce her name because my French is absolutely horrid. Madeline, I'm not even going to try. So this is an absolutely great story. The movie adaptation is also really good. Oh my God, I have oats on it. Um, so this is a great, so this is a story, right? This is also a story. City of Ember. It's a series. City of Ember. I read this years ago. By Jean Dupre. Right, um, and then we've got a larger, it's also a series. I love series, guys. I tend to have a lot of series in my room. Um, this is Angie Sage's Satmus Heap, book one, right? So all of these, got got Nix's Keys to the Kingdom, Mr. Monday, absolutely gorgeous series. Um, maybe not this one. This is one of my favorites, Juliette Marillier, rather thick. Those of the Forest. Of course, you guys probably know this one, Hunger Games, absolutely gorgeous, well written, Susan Collins, she is a boss of bosses. I have so many notes on this one because I actually use this for comprehension for lower four. Um, so yeah, so all of these are stories. So what if it's as, um, which one of these is actually a little skinnier? So what if it's as skinny, relatively skinny? as City of Ember or as thick as Magic in the Septimus Heap series, they all have common elements, right? And those common elements is that you have character, you have setting, you have plot, and you have conflict. All right? I'll tell you, again, um, I don't think I linked it today, but I'll link it after the live. I have a video explaining CXC's rubric for short story writing and all those elements i mentioned they need to see that in your short story so that's why i'm talking about them here as well you actually need to have this type of information in your story right so you need to know your character your setting your plot and your conflict and normally what i recommend for students because there are some students who do this really well and then i have some learners who struggle with it right and the first thing you want to do, so I'm getting into my tips now, right? This is, these are my, my tips that are going to help you really focus and write a story on the exam conditions. You need to come up with a story idea first. 
you don't just write okay because the first step in writing any type of writing is actually thinking and that's why for the exam you will notice they actually have these little boxes for planning i call them plan boxes right they have plan boxes you're you're actually supposed to use the plan boxes right i i tell my learners hey if you want to draw a stick man draw a stick man and plan your story right but it, essentially what that means is you need to come up with your story idea and in coming up with your story idea you always if you have trouble with this this is how i would advise you to do it you think of your character right so you think of a character in in a very uh, i don't know if you guys will know what a caricature is but you think of your character in a very simple way like uh for me in hunger games katniss i'm not a fan of katniss as a dean but katniss is a brave independent teenage girl with anger issues right for legitimate reasons for really legitimate reasons right or uh i'll show you this one no let me not show you that one because he scares me um ah in mr monday you have arthur penhaligon arthur penhaligon is how old is that in this arthur's about 40 oh sorry sorry laptop it's okay Art is about 14 and he is, um, he has very low confidence at the beginning of the story. He's very, he's not very confident. He doesn't think he's very brave. He thinks he's a really sucky person because he has asthma and anything sets off his asthma, right? So you want to have an idea of who your character is, very basic. And you don't have to really go out of the box if you notice that both the concept of the angry independent teenage girl and the concept of the young adult male feeling self-conscious and insecure they are not they're not unrealistic and they're not crazy fantasy or unrealist unrealistic yeah that's what i'm going for they're not unrealistic concepts but you want to think of your character so let's go even more basic a delinquent student a class bully um a naughty little boy right and you think of your character you can think very quickly in terms of age you can think very quickly in terms of uh their era of life are they writing exams i do have a lot of learners who you know it's very easy to think of what situation you're in right now you're preparing for exams and they love to write there's a tendency to write sorry excuse a tendency to write about challenges of preparing for exams because you all are are going through this particular motion right now right so we have we have our character so that's the first step in coming up with a story idea then you want to think of your setting setting is very basic right so hunger games hunger games takes place in a dystopia and dystopian basically means it's like our world but in the future and there are great social and political changes right so it takes place in a dystopian world where uh depending on where you live you may have limited resources and that's why they have that game the hunger games right or we have uh the setting here is actually i think in australia contemporary australia however it shifts to a world where it's ruled by the denizens i think it's the denizens and um you have a there are seven rulers and each one of them rules over a day of the week. Sounds crazy, I know. Uh, but that's the world. Uh, magic school, essentially. This is magic school. I can't remember what City of Ember is, but I think City of Ember is dystopian setting-wise. A Wrinkle in Time is... This is one of my favorite books. Why am I not remembering the setting? It's contemporary, but then they travel between worlds, <laughs> Right? So you think of your character, you think of your setting. So let me br bring it down again, right? So let's say our setting or environment, because setting is your time or your space or your time period or the time of day. Let's say it is, or an event, event can be under setting. Let's say it is the aftermath of a hurricane in your village, a bad hurricane, an actual bad hurricane, all right? It's devastated your area. 
or it could be a hurricane warning and you have fierce winds, maybe debris, but not a lot of significant damage. That's a thing. And it's going to affect how your character, depending on your character's personality, is going to react to it, right? Um, the beach during Java, Java, July, August vacation. So you're going to the beach during Java. That's a slightly diff different setting from going to the beach on a field trip with school because you probably can't even enter the water. More than likely, you can't enter the water if you go with a school. But if you go with your family during the July, August vacation, it's going to be a totally different experience. You should have fun unless there's some other problem and we'll get to that, right? Um, uh, a sweet 16 birthday party. That's an occasion or an event that can fall under setting and give you an idea of how to come up with a solid story idea. All right. Um, a class field trip. Well, I mentioned that. Right. So those are all ideas for setting. So we, we spoke about character. We spoke about setting. And now we're going to talk about conflict. So let me just recap. We have four elements of our short story, character, setting, plot and conflict. But what I'm giving you are my super secret tips that I normally give all my, my, my learners. And this is where we're creating a story idea. So for story idea, I normally say you need to have an idea, a brief idea, not a detailed idea. It's not, you're not writing this, okay? You're not, you're not writing this. And I'm not saying you're not writing that, uh, because i don't think you can write it in fact one of my favorite books is not here one of my favorite books is aragon from the inheritance series and aragon was written by christopher paolini when he was 14 15. it's absolutely gorgeous i think the first book because i don't like the second book um but you need to have an idea when you are thinking of your story and you're brainstorming your story idea you need to know have an idea of your character, of your setting, and you need to have an idea of your conflict. If, listen, let me tell you something here. You do not have a story if you do not have a problem. Just think about it. So a lot of people get confused because they keep thinking, oh, stories are only in books. No. If you watch Netflix movies and series, you're watching a story. Um, if it is you're tuning in to the latest gossip on TikTok, you are watching a story. If it is you are, hey, oh my gosh, are you dead? Okay, okay, honey, you're alive. Lupin nearly died, right. If it is you're reading manga and anime, and reading manga, watching anime. That I love, I love the stories, the, um, stories that are found in manga and anime. There are some really excellent storytelling in that particular genre, right? You are familiar with stories, okay? You, are, you watch cartoons, you are familiar with stories, all right? What the issue is here is that you are not familiar with writing the story, more than likely, so you need some practice in that. So like I said, first step, Come up with your story idea. For some of you, it's going to take some time. I've had learners who have to meditate to come up with a story idea. I've had some learners, as they see the prompt, because you do know you have a prompt, right? You, you have two prompts. It's either the pictorial prompt or the image prompt. And the other option is the text prompt. Fun stuff. Um, but some learners, they look at it and they just bam. They got it. They know exactly what the ideas of their idea is going to be. Um, I have a student who is in primary school. She's really gifted with short stories. I just say go ahead because she already looks at it and she has her story in her head. She's very, very good at coming up with story ideas. So some people are, some people have more of a challenge with it. That's okay. That's okay. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses and that's even among published, published authors, right? Good. So, last thing we need to do is get our conflict. Yes, we are still on story idea. Story idea is so important, guys. If you, you really cannot, if you don't get this down, it's just going to throw you off in the exam, all right? So, last thing you need is your conflict to cement your story idea because we, we, we really can't move on without it. So, what are examples of conflicts? Um, 
in Daughter of the Forest, one of my favorite series of all, uh, in Daughter of the Forest, um, the female lead, Sorcha, Sor, 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 she's Irish, so it's probably like Sorka. So Sorka um, has to free her six brothers who are under a spell. And as part of the spell, she's unable to speak. So she's not able to speak. But she has to free her brothers from a spell. They've been turned into swans. It's based off a fairy tale. Alright. Um if you've read Hung if you've or even if you've seen Hunger Games, you know somewhat the issue here. The whole issue is that class struggle with the Hunger Games and well Katniss is Katniss is trying to make sure she survives, right? Um in a wrinkle in time, uh the I mean, the protagonist is Meg. Meg is trying to find her father. He's he's missing. Meg's dad is missing and she really wants to get him because she's she loves her dad. She loves both her parents, but her dad is missing and she just can't take the fact that her family is falling apart and her family is being taught off in a really uh, unfortunate way because of um, her dad being missing, right? Um, so... Examples of conflicts you can come up with. Again, these are just from actual books. You can do a story where a student misplaced class funds. That is always dramatic. Okay, that's that's a little bit of drama. Um, so a student who's trying to get good grades in order to get a reward. Um, a student who is dealing with an illness. All right. So I'm mentioning that because you don't actually need to have a happy ending or you need to talk about a happy topic. That's not in the rubric. Again, when this is done and you come back to the description and I've updated it, you can see, you can see uh, my explanation of what CXC considers an ending. I do believe I covered that in a rubric video. All right. Um, but that's what you need for a story idea. You need to have an idea of character setting conflict. And again, it doesn't have to be in great detail. It, it can be very simple. You, you should be able to say it in one sentence. So it can be a delinquent student who is on a class field trip. So that's no setting. And this person was in charge of the class funds and lost it. Drama. It's a dramatic triangle. It's a triangle of drama. Right? So those, those are what you need for story idea. I can't believe I just spent 18 minutes, nearly 18 minutes talking about this. But it's that important it's because okay have you ever attempted a short story in class and then halfway through for exams right exams and the term class halfway through you're like yo i want to change this story and you have like 10 minutes left and you're like yo but i really want to change this story it's not a guy it's really a girl and um she's not really having problems with spanish she's having problems with French and this is because like you suddenly want to change everything it's because you have not really thought of your story idea now this is something you're supposed to do in five minutes some people take five seconds I'm telling you there are some learners they take five seconds and bam they've got it but you want to keep this to a five minute activity all right again five minutes you get your your story idea and you beautiful it's beautiful okay and now you've built your foundation so i'm going to go on to the rest of my tip i have one two three three okay well, about three more th tips right so here is something that's going to help you stay within word count because this is crucial some of you here are either under the word count or over it word, people who are generally over the word count are the ones of you who love to read books like this this is book one in our series this is the smallest book in the series it's absolutely gorgeous read it's a really good book right um so those of you who actually read a lot or sometimes watch a lot of tv or three tend to have a really good imagination um you guys sometimes might go over the ones who go under are the ones who are a lot more practically minded i think and this i'm being general huh? i'm being very general 
uh, a lot more practically minded in terms of the learners I've come across um, don't particularly like to read at all and not maybe words aren't your favorite thing right but it doesn't mean that you don't have ideas you actually have ideas because some of these learners who go under they will tell me their story and it's it's like this it's like this they are telling me the story and it's sounding complex right so you always have to kind of know where you where you are all right so let me let me go back on track because i do love short stories i love writing short i love to write short stories and i really want to make sure students get the best out of this question for the exam because i do think i do i can't speak i do think it's an unfair question for an exam. It's a creative piece that you are required to write under exam conditions. So you have to be very, very, very uh, smart about it. Okay, you really have to be very smart about it. Okay, so what you want to do in order to stay within word count, not be too high, not, not go over, not go under, is you want to ensure that you have one main character one major protagonist all right so let me explain i'll use hunger games because hunger games has well there's katniss there's gail i'm not team gail so sorry and there's peter okay and there's peter so we have a, a conflict with them that's a side story right um so they are pretty prominent characters you get an idea now obviously katniss is the major character katniss Aberdeen is the major character but you get an idea of who gail is you get an idea of who peter malak is and you know you, you dive into their history what i'm telling you is do not dive into anybody's history do not dive into anybody else's history personality character other than your main character um you know what i have to do this again with one of my stories and i will explain what i mean by that because i'm not saying don't have side characters i'm not saying don't have additional characters i'm saying that any time a learner of mine has tried to write a story and try to include the katniss the gale and the peter miller it automatically goes over the wood count because they, they're trying to give everybody some sort of backstory and you cannot do that in 450 words again a short story is not 450 words in the real world in cxc is that's a short story right it everywhere else in the globe it's not right so don't do that if it is you have a additional characters you want to make them into total caricatures you you like roles you make them into roles so for example an overprotective mother super easy to understand you a bully it's very easy to build a story that bully and again i will try to do videos with my actual short stories my own again i call them mini short stories with my actual mini short story stories to give you an idea of how it works um, a small business owner a student under exam stress those are really easy to portray because either by an action they do or by a or by dialogue, it's very easy to understand that that person is unhappy, stressed, sad, contented. It's very, very easy. Okay. Um, so focus on one, one protagonist, one protagonist. You all know what a protagonist is, right? Main character. Yes. Protagonist. Good. Then this tip is also really key and it's slightly a pet peeve. So I'll go into my pet peeve, right? Because when I go into this, it will actually help you for exams. I think I mentioned it in my rubric video, but I'm not sure, so I'll just repeat it here. You do not want to include a lot of dialogue. It's, it's, don't do it. Dialogue eats up your word count. It, it listen, it's very greedy. Dialogue is very, very greedy. It will eat up your word count. So if you want to have Peter saying, I never liked you, and she replied, well, I never liked you first. Then he responded with, listen you need to come out of my face or i will do something to you we're just we're just eating there's conflict yes there's tension yes but you're eating up your word counts they're talking too much so yes you can have conversation but every time someone speaks 
it must actually propel the story forward so it must actually reveal some twist or it must actually give me more information about the main character or it must actually unveil reveal the villain's plan it must do something crucial it cannot be and this is my pet peeve some of you from primary school may still have this may still do this it must not be bring bring the phone rang doing bring bring the phone rang is not dialogue no one is talking the phone is not animate so the bring bring the phone rang or dang -dang, dang -dang -dang, the bell rang or any of this these sounds from things that are not living no dialogue the only thing going in quotation marks are actual dialogue between human beings or if you have a creature that's talking like if a stuffed toy came to life and is talking to you fine or you talk to your plant fine once it propels the story forward i understand don't don't overdo the dialogue okay be very smart about it again as i'm here i'm realizing i should show you one of my um samples so that you would see what i mean so i'll, I'll work on that okay um plan or organize your events according to plot all right this is the last thing I think I've worked on quite a few ways to help my learners understand plot. Um, the one I have currently is kind of complicated. I'm trying to work on something even simpler. But the simplest way is for you to understand that plot is your beginning, your middle, and your end. And I'm literally doing it like this visually because your beginning is your first paragraph, your exposition where you introduce your character or your conflict and or your setting right that's all we're doing in the first paragraph big hint you introduce character conflict setting so hunger games is a really great example because in the introduction of hunger games we are introduced to katniss and all her absolutely wonderful sunny disposition and if you've seen this you know i'm being very sarcastic katniss is not sunny right um or in this book magic with septimus heap you're actually introduced to mr heap and the birth of his son yeah the birth of his son the birth of his son there was a boot i forgot it after we read it apparently right and that's what you're just introduced to or Okay, you guys are older, so I can show you this one. But this book is a bit triggering, so I would not recommend you read it if you like happy fairy tales. If you read this one, Prince of Thieves, this is a very grim, dark fantasy. Uh, Brother Jorg in the beginning is committing crimes of heinous nature. Very, very heinous. This is not not like hey i robbed a man like hey war crimes right so that's what brother joke does in the beginning right so these these beginnings get us into the story all right it's not a pre prehistory they get us into the story and we get to know instantly our characters we get to instantly know the problem we get to know instantly the setting uh magic was more setting setting hinted at conflict um this definitely lets you know who brother joke was and this lets you know katniss's um conflict her personal conflict and setting it, it basically lets you know about katniss especially setting because the setting in this novel is a dystopian see in dystopians you need to know setting pretty pretty early right so that's your beginning. Your beginning is introducing these elements, right? The same elements we spoke about in story idea, right? Then you go into the middle. And that can be, depending on how you word your story, that can be three to four paragraphs. I'm just saying three to four paragraphs. I'm not saying word counts. Three to four paragraphs. Again, it depends on how you as a learner word your story. Um, my learners that I work with, 
I get to know their writing. So then I can tell them, hey, you do too much in the exposition in your first paragraph, or you do too little in the middle. One a person I'm working with right now, he's actually in form two. Um he does a pretty good first start. His middle is like like a summary <laughs> right which is something that happens in writing we tend to want to summarize but don't worry it's that's a whole other story right so your beginning is focusing on conflict character setting your middle is starting to give me events or actions that lead me to the climax which is technically still the middle and when i get to the climax the climax is this big revelation or this big confrontation or this big decision to revelation, confrontation, decision. And when that is made, we fall off, falling action, and then we get into our ending, all right? And I won't say conclusion, because this is not an argumentative. Do not dare conclude your story, okay? You have to end your story. You need to give me a resolution. What is a resolution? A resolution is telling me definitively you've closed off the main problem so like um hunger games is a series and even though it's a series and it's going to continue in the next what's the next one? catching fire it's going to continue in catching fire um i still need an end to this i'm not going to cliffhanger it what's a book that cliffhangered and i was really i know if you've ever read lord of the rings lisa that man cliffhangered everybody that's crazy i was so glad I was not alive when that book was originally published because I would have been upset. It was a cliffhanger, right? So that's another thing. Do not cliffhanger your stories. Nobody's waiting for you to come back to give you part two or book two. Okay? Okay? Maybe you don't have that tendency, but I dealt with SEA students just recently, and those primary school kids were like, hold on, miss, you'll get part two later. I'm like, I can't do part two. You need to give me the entire story now. <laughs> right so write part two on your own time so you need a definitive ending to the story and it answers your problem if it is okay let's go to hunger games right i'm gonna do this and try to be spoiler free for those of you who have not looked at it so if it is her issue is to win the hunger games what should happen at the end right if it is that um meg in a wrinkle in time wants to find her dad what should be happening at the end right um keys to the kingdom mr monday first book if it is that arthur penhaligon needs to find the first key to the kingdom what should happen to that at the end right and that's going to help you now here's the thing that you need to know and i was referring to at the beginning it does not need to be a happy ending it just needs to end um i have a story it's called the ring um it's about a girl who is very very sick but nobody knows and when you read it you don't know she's sick you just know she's worried and concerned about something she goes to school as normal she's bright um teachers love her students hate her because you know we don't like no bright child mm -hmm. but we want marks eh? so you all need to decide what you want to do can't hear the bright children and want the bright children marks you understand i'm just saying right and she has a particular confrontation and then you see at the end with her dad and she's saying that i just have a few more months to live so the ending for that is actually kind of sad however um because you know she's going to die she's not even going to make it to exams actually and none of her teachers know it well that's the backstory for when i wrote it none of her teachers know it none of her friends know it but her parents know it. She's just going to school as normal because she wants to. And, um, but at the end, that's when she says she's got a few more months to live. No, she's got, she's going to die in a few months. And then her dad says, no, you have a few more months to live. Right? So, yes. Okay. Hi, Zaki man. I'm now seeing your question. Um, will you lose master cliffhangers? Yes, you can. Because you have not ended the story. Because, they want a complete beginning, middle, and end. So part of an end is telling me this happened. So, 
Uh, I've forgotten what happened in book two of most of these books. Not Prince of Thorns. Prince of Thorns scares me. Brother Jog is very scary. Um, okay, let me use a book that I know practically by heart. So if you've known the Narnia Chronicles, right? First book, no, not the first book. Technically, it's the second book to read. So the Land of Witch and Wardrobe, right? It ends with the kids coming back to the real world. What's the book after that? Ah, uh, what's the book after that? Okay, the book after that with the Pevensies is Prince Caspian, right? So, Narnia Chronicles, The Land of Witch and the Wardrobe, it ends with them coming back to the real world. So they had the adventure, they met Aslan, they met Mr. Tumnus, they met all the creatures, they fought their grand battle, but it ends, even though they had their rule in Care Paravel, it still ends with them coming back to the real world and turning back into kids, right? I, if I spoil that for you, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry if I did. I love that story. Um, but when you get to Prince Caspian, which is technically the direct sequel to The Land of Witch and the Wardrobe, we meet them again, but they're going to have a totally new adventure, all right? So all stories should have that. And, see, and, and that's just exactly the format for the story. That's how stories work. Cliffhangers are great for ending chapters. Okay? End a chapter, you put a cliffhanger there. You've got a movie and just before the commercial break, you've got a cliffhanger. Absolutely wonderful. Because I'm going to stay there and I'm going to wait for it to come back, right? But that is not a story. When the movie is done, they don't end with cliffhangers. A good movie is not supposed to end with a cliffhanger. A good book is not supposed to end with a cliffhanger. Uh, books that continue in series. Um, and again, please remember, you're not writing a series for the exam. Thank you. But books that end with series, they give you enough information to want to come back. So like for this book, like Brother Joke scares me. He's very... <sighs> Brother Joke has had a very hard life, okay? I'm telling you, this book is not for faint of heart-ish. Or maybe it might, you all might not be bothered. Listen, it's, it's got trigger warnings for it, okay? Um, but Brother, Brother Jog is so intriguing that I had to read, I bought all the books. My brother and I, we bought all the books because it's like, I have to know what happened to Brother Jog, right? Because after Prince of Thorns, it's King of Thorns? King of Thorns. And then I think it's Emperor of Thorns, right? Or in a book like this, it's um rather thick it's how many pages is this story ah 500 no 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 551 551 pages but there's still enough so they've completed this particular adventure right but there's still enough in interest in terms of characters in terms of the setting in terms of the series long conflict for it to be interesting i'm only just clarifying that for those of you who probably want to write and write further outside the parameters of the exam but please note for the exam you are not writing series do not yeah it's as i realize there's no end i know i'm going to look at a different uh a different section of the table and again just check my video on explaining the rubric I don't think I have timestamps in that video. I apologize. But look at that video and you will see what I'm talking about. And quite frankly, marking short story is a bit more challenging because the rubric, it's all the other questions that come from paper too. They are divided into content, organization, and lang language, right? For stories, all of those elements, they come together to make a good story. So they don't divide them. They don't divide them for the exam. So it's kind of challenging sometimes. I mean, CXC's rubric is not horrid. Um, but honestly, uh, because sometimes I need a division, if I mark lower form or if I mark new learners, I use actually the SEA, so the SEA rubric because there is a division. But anyway, that is those are my tips, right? Those are my tips. Um, if you have any more questions you can always comment on the video if you're not here on the live and you're watching the replay um i would just say to reiterate please don't forget in terms of the elements of a story 
again basic elements of any story character setting plot and conflict you cannot have a story without a problem i can't read this if i wasn't terrified of brother joe this we would not read if katniss didn't have to battle tons of people right so you need a you need a problem um when it comes to actually being in front of the the paper you need to actually um come up with your story idea quickly focus on one main character don't put a lot of dialogue in and organize according to plot christiana said i missed out the story and got it wow christiana damn okay listen if you missed out story and you got a two your comprehension is probably pretty good you okay i'm just going to guess that you really only missed out on a one because you missed out on the story if you did if you did sba did you do the sba did you do the sba or were you probably okay and you got a great mark for sba right you got a great mark oh you didn't get a good mark for your sba and you got a two you sure your problem is oh you oh paper tree damn girl oh yeah boy. oh my god paper tree is um let me applaud guys please applaud christiana you all applaud christiana those of you who are in school and going to secondary school you all do not know what paper three is right paper three is a different universe <laughs> it's definitely it is definitely not the same universe as the sba i um it it, it was it truly wasn't horrible but most students can't do it so um i'm working with a private candidate right now and you know it's it's it, it's it's always interesting it's, it's it wasn't bad but i'm sure it it's actually not bad but the information is so different even for those who've done the actual sba and it's very hard to find papers so i get frustrated i get very frustrated with that paper um but are you gonna do cape are you doing cape christiana no you're not doing cape persons who do that paper tree when they move up to cape i think it's an easier cape communication studies it's easier if you do that um that's what i like about it probably not yet cape is not for everybody i'm not a huge fan of cape that's beyond the size all right so all right christiana that that's still pretty good that too i think that's still pretty good uh depends on what your profiles are if you want to improve it i mean if you're improving it go ahead do you honestly because you know we have to satisfy our own selves at times um but if it is you left out a short story and and you know you did paper three and you got a two i think that's pretty impressive so i hope these tips will help you get that one now <gasps> a oh you got an a oh gosh girl yes girl see that a i love that Great. I glad you got an A comprehension. That's really awesome. Yeah. You see, then then it could have been for you, Christiana, a combination of missing out the short story plus the SBA. Um, I forgot how the sorry, not the SBA. It may be the paper three a little bit. Because paper three does have a creative component. That last question is creative. Because you can do anything with it. So if anybody's here and you're still here and you do paper, you're doing paper three, I'm just going to give you this really quick, although I'll probably do this in another video. Um, paper three, that third question, I call that the creative question. All right. You can do. OK, let me not tell you, you can do whatever you want. That is a lie. But you are going to write a creative piece on the topics that were discussed okay so i think 2021 i got a 2021 paper there's a year with environment okay so you're gonna write something that's based on environment and saving the earth you can write a song you can write a poem and do 
I said Darian Trees. But what I also recommend to a lot of people who do not write songs or poetry, if you don't write songs or poetry, please do not attempt it. It will, it, it really just, it's a very specific, it's a specific medium. I mean, listen, it's very specific. So if you're not used to writing it, don't, don't even bother. But you can, for that section, write a short story. And you can use this. I do like short stories for that section. And I do like diary entry. If you've ever seen the paper, the year where they spoke about um, skin color and how people view their own skin color, they have darker skin tones, um, it's Stephanie Babatunde. A diary entry by Stephanie Babatunde. And, yo, that was a gorgeous piece of diary work and it, it it really brought the message out so you can look at that paper and it would help you a lot all right um so that's why i'm going to end this i didn't think i would be on here for so long but i'm really glad i'm really glad if you got information if you do need to contact me directly for anything for any questions my links should be in the description it's easy to get me well, YouTube, no, no, not YouTube, not YouTube, um, IG or Facebook, you can message me directly, um, I think Facebook may be a little faster, and then I can get in contact with you, and we can chat, so, y'all take care, as always, sending this information with love and success.